and they are preparing very, very hard for the shooting of the Lord of the Rings series from Amazon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's actually happening. I mean, the, oh. the shooting of the Lord of the Rings series by Amazon is not happening right now, but they're preparing it right now. So it's okay. all of Auckland. They're going to be shooting in some studio in New Auckland. And then they're, they're doing scouting at the moment for some locations of the Lord of the Rings. How cool Ooh. is that? So yeah, oh, happening. happening all over again. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome to another one of our awesome live session where we answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. We take any questions that you may have about making a trip to New Zealand, organizing your trip in New Zealand, organizing a working holiday in New Zealand, and any of those kind of um, those kind of topics that you guys have. So if you do have any questions, it's your chance to put them right now in the comments of the video or in the uh, live chat if you're watching this live. And we go through your questions every single week. But why are we answering questions of people? Why well, us? Well, I'm glad you asked, Robin, because uh, we are the team behind backpackerguide.nz. And this is Robin and I'm Laura. And every single week on Sunday, 8 a.m. New Zealand time, we come live on YouTube to answer your guys' questions about traveling in New Zealand, just in case you maybe don't want to read through our website, which you totally should because it's free and there's pr probably the answers to all your questions on there. But you can always come and pop in on the live chat and ask away your questions. Also, throughout the week, we take questions that we receive in the comments of any of our videos and we pull them together just so we can answer some of those questions during this live session as well. Um, and just to go over the times around the world, like I said, we do this at 8 a.m. New Zealand time on a Sunday. Um, but around the world in the US, that is 4 p.m. EST on a Saturday or 12 p.m. PST. Um, in Europe, so around UK and France, it's 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. on a Saturday evening. And in India, that is bright and early on a Sunday morning at 1.30 a.m. Boom. All right, now just because, before we get started, guys, we just want to give you a massive thank you. Uh, you guys are being awesome, and we just passed 11,000 subscribers on the channel, which means there's 11,000 of you guys that trust us to plan your trip in New Zealand. And we're so thankful for that. Your support is awesome. The fact that you guys, every single time you watch our videos, you click like, uh, you hit subscribe, you really help us out. That's really, really awesome. And the more subscriber we have or the more like we have, basically, it shows our video to the most people. So thank you so much. You guys rock. All right. So we're going to go through your questions in the live chat if you have any questions for us. Or we're going to go through the questions that we received throughout the week. But before we get uh, started, one more thing. If the sound uh, turns bad or like it happened to us last week, please tell us on the live chat. Just don't, don't just leave. Just tell us so we can just fix that and so everybody else can enjoy it. Because it turned out that last week, about 45 minutes of every tips that we gave you turned out to be inaudible, which is a bit sad. So, yeah, just tell us. Just say, hey, Robin, Laura, the sound doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So that'd be awesome. All right. So Le Petit Dico uh, in, on the live chat already says, hi, he says, glad to know you. I will go to Wellington in February, so I'll watch your videos. Awesome. Ooh. Wellington is, is really, it's a really awesome place to be. It's the capital of New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to do there. We have actually a lot of videos of uh, awesome stuff to do in Wellington, so check them out. It's, it's a good place to live in. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's the Wellington Botanic Gardens, which and we have is, videos on. And... I just remember. Yeah. It's actually the windiest city in the world actually on the books is it actually yeah it's the actually, windiest city in the yeah, world yeah <laughs> it's windier than chicago apparently so yeah okay. apparently it's the windiest city in the well world. enjoy that <laughs> le petit dico <laughs> le petit dico le it's petit. french okay. it's, i think it means like the small dictionary or something like oh, okay yeah. he must be very knowledgeable oh yes <laughs> uh, otis lee say may i ask is there any chance to work in kiwi orchards in the south island thanks i don't i'm not sure if there are any kiwi Oh, yes, possibly uh, near Nelson. Is there? Yeah, in Mo a place called Motueka. There's quite oh, a lot of yes. fruit art orchards around that area. So Nelson and Motueka, they're on the north of the South Island. It's one of the sunniest regions in New Zealand, so that's why they have all the fruit orchids. So, um, yeah, that would be a good place to find that sort of work in the South Island. Yeah, but uh, most of the fruit picking uh, in New Zealand will be done uh, in the North Island, especially around the area of um, uh, Taranga, Taranga. <sighs> and Hawke's Bay, uh, it's, it's, around it's Napier. <laughs> Um, so yeah, usually, like you obviously obviously are already know because you're asking about the South Island, but yeah, in the North Island is the largest sort of kiwi yeah. 
fruit industry there. But yeah, try your luck uh, in Nelson in the South Island. Um, and if there's not kiwi work, there certainly will be apples. And yeah. they do all sorts of like stone fruits and stuff. And they do a ton of grapes as well over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can do wine. You can actually yeah. make wine. That's pretty awesome. An official bucket list family. Hey guys, how are you hey. doing? How was your trip to New Zealand? Uh, we were helping those guys uh, plan a limited trip to yeah, New Zealand. Yeah, that was um, a, uh, probably about a year ago. Or no, something. that wasn't. That yeah, was, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, they were watching our New Zealand's biggest. Oh, that's true. Videos. That's true. That's true. But yeah. they say they had they had one. That's good. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, so let's get started with um, with a question that you guys sent us. Um, Otis, say you want kiwi pollen. No, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a tough one. Um, it's mm -hmm. very specialized work, but yeah, yeah, yeah learning that was good. Mm -hmm. And you were right, k k uh, an official bucket list family was a year ago. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Time flies. Time flies. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> we're still doing these videos. <laughs> we haven't moved. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. So um, on uh, one of the YouTube comments and one of our video, we had a question for Alin from Alin Hello. And she says, hello, backpackers. There's a lot to do in Queenstown, obviously, but I was wondering if you could tell us about Glenorchy uh, or Glenchory. I think she, stayed, she meant Glenorchy, I think. Yeah. But yeah, things to do and good hikes. Thank you. All right. So Laura actually has spent extensive time, amount of time around the area over there. And actually, uh, she just came back from a trip from just there. So she is the prime um, suspect <laughs> to give uh, information about that. So Glenorchy is located uh, about an hour and uh, two hours from Queenstown. No, less than that, about less? 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. back and forth. Okay. Okay. I'm always thinking, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so Queenstown, uh, so uh, it's it's not too far from Queenstown. It is very close to the beautiful Fjordland National Park. It's a really kind of hot spot. If you're in Queenstown, you want like a big fix of amazing wilderness, which looks different than just the, the, the mountain that you have like nearby and you want something like more Fjordland, you know, uh, UNESCO World Heritage National Park. Mm -hmm. You want something absolutely world-class and epic. That's a great place to go to. And there is actually quite a few things to do, despite the fact that it's a pretty pretty small um i mean the town tiny so the, tiny village how many buildings is there like honestly just just think about like buildings and houses how yeah, many would it be, I like, I, yeah i think when you stand in the middle of the village you can probably count and see all i'd, I'd say 20 there. at most yeah, right? probably. yeah so it's very small right so co think think like that you know you're not really going to stay in Glenock. you're not going to be you know staying there for lunch or those kind yeah. of it's there's probably about 20 buildings uh most of them there's no one in and uh, yeah so Think about Glenorchy that way. Anyway, yeah, what so, is so Glenorchy, and also just to say, like, because obviously um, Aline is saying, like, what is there to do from Glenorchy as if she might be staying there? And there is some, well, there's one accommodation that I know of there, so which is kind of like... Um, Kind of like a upmarket holiday park. They have sort of luxurious cabins there. I think you can camp there as well or pack up a camper van there. But most people actually travel to Glenorchy from Queenstown, obviously, because Queenstown has far more accommodation and services there. So um, the good thing about visiting Glenorchy from Queenstown, though, is that many of the tour operators actually transport people to Glenorchy as part of their tours. And if they offer any, um, if any of the activity providers, like I'm going to go through just now, they um, actually offer pickups in Queenstown to take you to their location in Glenorchy. So, so that means if you want to enjoy Glenorchy, you can just stay in Queenstown exactly. and not have to bother trying to figure things out from there. Yeah, exactly. So don't worry, you can still um, experience Glenorchy even if you're staying in Queenstown. Okay, so let's go through some of the activities that you can do in the Glenorchy area. One of the first things that springs to mind is the Dart Rivers Wilderness Jet. So jet boating is pretty huge in this area and, and around Queenstown, but the Dart Rivers Wilderness Jet is a slightly different experience. It's not just about the adrenaline thrills, the 360 degree spins that jet boats are famous for, but it's more of a, a wilderness journey um, on top of having a few fun spins and that's Sort of thing. So they take you on the Dart River, which is a really beautiful, shallow, braided river going into the Mount Aspiring National Park. And basically it gets you to some really remote wilderness places. And along the way, there's the opportunity to do a short walk through magnificent beach forest. 
Um, and your guide along the way is going to give you loads of information on the, so the, the flora and fauna of the area, the history of where you're in. Um, and also that area is a UNESCO World Heritage Area. So yeah, it's a, a pretty amazing place to be. And jet boating is really an awesome um, way to experience that area. And they also offer uh, pickups in Queenstown. Okay, so then another thing you can do in Glenarchy, and this one's actually from Glenarchy, um, is take a scenic flight with Glenarchy Air. There is a small airfield near the town, and if you take a scenic flight from there, you usually can go across the Fjord and National Park. Um, obviously, amazing vistas from from the skies above um, and yeah, you get to fly over a heritage, uh, world heritage area as well. And a lot of the flights also can take you to Milford Sound, which Milford Sound is only about 15 minutes away from Glenarchy by air. Um, usually if you're taking the bus from Queenstown, it takes around four hours <laughs> to get there. So this is really a short way to get to Milford Sound, but also a super scenic way to get there too. So it's a bit pricey, though. <laughs> it compared, is, compared it to is a bit person. pricey, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, another thing you can do if you actually do have your own car and you're staying in Queenstown is that you can take the scenic drive to Glenarchy. Uh, there is a road that follows the edge of Lake Wakatipu, which goes between Queenstown and Glenarchy. And there's lots of sort of stop-offs on the side of the road where you can, you know, stop, have a look at the lake and take some photos and do all that sightseeing sort of stuff. It is a bit of a windy road though and it does get pretty narrow in places so be sure to just take it easy. Um, so also on the question that we had they asked what sort of hikes if there are any good hikes around Glenarchy and there definitely are but you do need to have your own transport to get there. One of the things that I'm thinking of is the Rootburn track which is one of the New Zealand Great Walks and um, it takes about two to three days to hike that one and it ends sort of on the side near Milford Sound when you cross over the mountains. Um, but if you don't have time to do the whole multi-day hike or you're not really into multi-day hiking, then it's a really good one to just do a day hike of. You just have to return the same way, go as far as you feel you want to go. We actually have a video of us uh, doing exactly that. Uh, yes, with, we did um, do that. With, uh, we, we went with the guys so they just showed us a, a few extra stuff. It was yeah. pretty awesome. It's really, it's really awesome to do. Yeah, it's a really stunning area. And that first section of the track that you access from Glenarchy is through absolutely amazing forest there's birds everywhere we saw loads of birds when we went and then it's sort of at the end of that first section you come into this huge valley and um, with mountains all around you and it's absolutely stunning you can definitely see why the Rubin track is one of the great walks um, but just bear in mind that the track, the the road to get to the Rootburn track is a gravel road, and note that some uh, rental car companies are a little bit picky about having rental cars on gravel roads. So if that applies to you, just be aware of that. Another walk you can do in the area is Twelve Mile Delta, and this is a Lord of the Rings filming location. Um, but it's quite hard to actually pinpoint where that filming location is unless you are on a tour, which actually is a perfect segue to my next activity, <laughs> um, which is with. Sweet. <laughs> which is with Nomad Safaris. And this is a four-wheel drive tour operator that goes from Queenstown. And one of their tours is a Lord of the Rings tour where they take you down the famous Queenstown Glenarchy Road to various Lord of the Rings locations, including that one at 12 Mile De Delta. But they also go to the filming location of Isengard and um, some forests that the elves were in. <laughs> One of the forests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they actually, they used a lot of different forests to, for a lot of different parts and everything yes. like that. So, yeah. So, it's sometimes hard to be like, okay, it's one of the forests. It's one of the one, many which forests. One really? About sometimes, two seconds of a scene was shot there. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes even you, you think like, oh my gosh, like, what is, how does the guide actually know like this is this one and not that one? And sometimes they even get confused on the two, yeah. which happened to us. That was quite funny. But the really cool thing is that they have the little photos. They usually have a book yeah. with the scene of the photo where it was. So, that always is a good visual. Okay, so let's move on to another activity because there's actually quite a lot of activities. Yeah, for a place with only 20 houses and probably no one living there. Yeah. <laughs> so another thing you can do is horse trekking. There are two horse trekking operators in Glenarchy, uh, the Dart River Adventures and High Country Horses. Um, and that sort of gives you a bit of a Lord of the Rings feel, galloping through Lord of the Rings scenery. There's a lot of shallow river crossings to do as well. And that's definitely a 
a super scenic place to do horse trekking in New Zealand. For safety purposes, you cannot bring your bulls or um, swords during those horse trekking <laughs> yes. tools, just so you're aware. Yes, uh, leave the one ring at home. Um, <laughs> And finally on our list is a really long hike, I think it's about eight hours in total, um, is to Ernslaw Burn. This is a track taking you to the end of a glacier where there's all these little waterfalls um, falling from the edge of the glacier. And it's also a filming location from the Hobbit movies. So there's that there too. But if you don't fancy hiking because it is a really long hike, there are helicopter tours taking you there as well. And I think they operate from Queenstown. Yeah. And uh, certainly they're a little pricey though. It's the... Yeah, I mean, air travel is not yeah, exactly it's, it's a cheap expensive. and free thing to do. <laughs> exactly. So if you want to find out more about each of those things to do in Glenorchy and in Queenstown, you can head to www.backpackerguide.nz where there is all the information that we know of there. That's why Laura went there recently just to gather all this information for you guys. Also, if you find this video useful, be cool, click like and click subscribe. There's 11,000 people that subscribe to us, so 11,000 people can't be wrong, right? <laughs> anyway. I knew you were gonna say that. I was like, he's not gonna say that, is he? He did. <laughs> all right, let's go back to the live chat. All right, what has been happening? Uh, be Blob uh, Podel, Biplob Podel, mm -hmm. um, is it easy to get a job in Kiwi Farm in Taranga? Yes, very easy. We actually have many videos about that. So uh, feel free to type um, Kiwi literally on the search bar of our YouTube channel and you'll find plenty of videos. You can also type Taranga and we'll explain to you how to find the Kiwi, the Kiwi fruit picking jobs and everything. But in short, it's about like uh, working hostels, uh, you can stay in a hostel and they find a job for you and it's really handy and they, they kind of even drop you off there. Um, honestly, yeah. that easy. Super, oh, easy. super, super, super easy. Super as easy. long as you are actually in New Zealand when you're trying to find a job and you yes. are available to obviously yeah. work and you have the work visa you straight away. But if you are overseas and you haven't got your visa yeah. yet, then that is when it's difficult. So super easy once you get here, once you're based in here you have your IR down and your location, you get your job yeah. with a stab of a finger. Really good um, pointing out. Yeah. Okay, then we have the story from Eyal, which says that uh, he already traveled around New Zealand. He watched a lot of videos and loved them, which I love to hear that. It's awesome. He said he traveled three months with a tourist visa. He bought a camper and it was amazing. And he can't wait to finish university and do something similar again, he said, with the wow. best, which is awesome. And he watched the 365 activities, cool. 365 days. So, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, hopefully uh, university is going to be finished soon. You can also, you know, you can also bail out. Who, who needs a diploma? What the hell? Go and travel. Um, that's a bit what I did. Um, so, yeah, no, um, that's awesome to hear that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you're going to get um, you're gonna get back on the, into New Zealand soon. Uh, the bucket list family say they want uh, to do four by four um, trike that you were talking about. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, Nomad Safari. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call you Graham, uh, Tadjidiesh, because I can't pronounce oh, that. Graham. Uh, he says he's loved the video. That's very informative. You're very Ooh. welcome. If you have some question of your own, everything in the live chat, go ahead. We're here to help. Uh, an official bucket list family says uh, they remember when we were only at 300 subscribers. Yeah. yeah 11,000 now. How cool is that? <laughs> and it's, it's going at the moment. We're getting about 900 new subscribers every month, which is so awesome. I mean, that means you guys are actually trusting us for your information, which feeling so thankful for you know it just feels yeah. so good um so yeah so thank you so much uh karen alami says hey you're live hi everyone hi karen how you doing um yes we are live uh, <laughs> yeah you see, that's a proof right here <laughs> um vladimir says oh hey who pays the bill in the first date men or women or split the bill uh well it depends uh how if you are <laughs> <laughs> If, uh, how generous do you feel like being? <laughs> Depends how expensive the date is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> and say, uh, it's awesome if I can use it. Uh, Karin, good luck. Hopefully you get to. And back at this family, and such so Vlad says the man. Uh, and Ayas, Ayas says, I'm going to call right away my uni to say I'll stop coming to study. <laughs> yes, good job. How about the plane? You know how much money you save by not going studying? Anyway, yeah. don't get me started on that. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm all about traveling. All right. Shall we... Um, shall do another we, question. Yeah, shall we actually do a bit of an itinerary, guys? So yeah. while you guys are... Oh, actually, there's a question in the meantime. GLs. Growing this dish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, is it worth doing both Doubtful Sound and Milford Sound, or would you skip one? Uh, we have about four weeks in New Zealand. Is it worth? Um, all right. We can describe you both, actually. We have a video of both and everything. So yeah. let's just read that properly so everybody knows what we're talking about. Okay, GL's Groendergistics says on YouTube, is it worth doing both Doubtful Sound and Milford Sound, or would you skip one? I have about four weeks in New Zealand. Which one do you think I should do? All right, so first up, let me just preface with the fact that we do have videos of both. So we have about a 10 minute video of, of Milford Sound. Actually, we have plenty of videos about all the different things you can do in Milford Sound. And we have about a 10 minute videos about the trip to Doubtful Sound. Um, the main difference that you would find between Milford Sound and Doubtful Sound is the accessibility. There is a road. You can go to Milford Sound by bus. You can go to Milford Sound with your own car, with your camper van. You can go there and actually you will have to, the time to spend some time here. There is also multiple things to do. There is uh, kayaking. There is cruise. There is scuba diving. There is a lot of hikes. There is, there is you know, you can fly ab above there, do, do some air, air, air trips and everything. Plus, there is probably more things that I just forgot right here. In Doubtful Sound, there is probably only one way to get there, which is to take a... Uh, 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 to take your car or a bus to Teana, uh, yeah, Teana. Yeah. then you take you hop on the bus, then you cross a lake on the boat, then you get on the, another bus, and then finally you go on the boat, and it's just the one tour, and you can't, you don't have that much flexibility. Your options are that tour that I just described, or um, or a tour that 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 does about the same thing, but for about three days. So, yeah, you kind of. You know, you kind of have a bit more flexibility in Milford Sound, but there is also more people. Now, Laura, do you want to describe a little bit about um, about well, which one of them you want to describe? So yeah. describe, <laughs> describe your length and tell him, and I'll do the other one. Okay. Uh, well, let's start with Milford Sound because that is by far the most popular one to visit, but that's mainly because it is the most accessible. And like Robin said, there's many different ways to get there and sort of experience Milford Sound. So Milford Sound um, is, there is a road that connects Milford Sound to um, the town of Tiana uh, and then from Tiana to Queenstown. So you can, so, so because of that, there are a few different bus operators to get to Milford Sound. And you can also drive yourself if you have a car rental or a camper van rental. Um, um, just before just before you can go in, yeah. if you want to find out all your different tools options to go to Milford Sound, we actually have tried a lot of them and we actually have an article on backpackerguide.nz. So if you go on www.backpackerguide.nz, then you type Milford Sound in the search bar and you'll find that out and you'll be able to compare all of them and find the best one for you. Yeah. So if you are traveling from Tiana, which um, are off, well, yeah, if you are traveling from Tiana to get to Milford Sound, it usually takes a couple of hours to get there. But if you are traveling from Queenstown, it usually takes around four hours to get to Milford Sound. Um, and all along the way, there's loads of really awesome photo opportunities and walks to do. Many of the bus tours step stop at the same walks along the way. All the short ones is usually walks that are about 10 minutes long to 20 minutes long. So they're the ones that are accessible for the most people. But then once you've got through the amazing scenic journey to Milford Sound by road, you arrive at the Milford Sound Marina where there's loads of different cruises to choose from but they all pretty much offer the same thing. They're about two hours long each. They follow the same route around Fjordland, uh, well, around the fjord, um, taking you to see seal rock. So you're almost always gu guaranteed to see seals and um, taking you under Stirling Falls. So you get that um, experience of a waterfall literally falling onto the boat. Um, and yeah, so there's they do offer very similar things in terms of the cruises at Milford Sound. Um, but like Robin said, there's also the option to do kayaking in Milford Sound and even scuba diving, which is pretty awesome. There's an underwater observatory in the area as well. And there's a few different hikes you can do to get different sort of visuals of Milford Sound and different, you know, photo spots as well. Um, so yeah, that's Milford Sound. Um, 
So the, the thing with Milford Sound, if you're going from, the thing to note is that if you're going from Queenstown, it is a full day there and back. If you're from Tiana, it's sort of half a day there and back. Or you can actually... No, no, even if from Tiana, usually you go there for, you know, you, it's your whole day activity. You yeah. Work, okay, okay, if you do, if you say half a day, right, that would be, let's say you start at 12 and you just do the afternoon. You wouldn't go from Tiana to Milford Sound and back just starting around 12 o'clock, right? You wouldn't do just yeah. half a day. Okay. I, I personally, I mean, it's, it's different kind of opinion, but I think no matter where where you start from it's, it's a full day activity to get okay. there to a cruise and come so back. maybe a better way to say it is that from Queenstown it's a super long day from Tiano it's yeah. it's a full day it's more bearable um, <laughs> and then yeah and but then in comparison to Doubtful Sound Robin's just about to get to even from Tiana or from Manapuri, which Manapuri is a town literally about 20 minutes away from Tiana where the where the um cruises from for Doubtful Sound actually start from, even from there, that is a full long day experience. Yeah, so no. do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, so Doubtful Sound is, it's uh, it's a similar kind of trek. You kind of have to organize your day, you have to organize your tour, and you can't go on your own. There is no, I mean, technically you could if you were to hike through the bush for days and days. There's a story of this explorer, right, that is, that's always doing the tour, the guy that did the mapping. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he, he got lost in the bush for like months. <laughs> um, anyway, so technically you could, but you won't be able to. Um, so you basically go with uh, with a company, and, and for the sake of example, we're going to take Real Journeys, which because I think that's probably the... That, least, and I think Go Orange. Go Orange, but they're the same company okay. now, I think. So technically, it's the same business. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, so Real Journey, they will take you on to... So you will check in into one of the offices, then they will take you onto a bus that will bring you to a boat. You're going to cross a lake, and it's really scenic and really beautiful. And once you arrive there, um, you are on kind of a dirt road for that let's say about 30, 40 minutes, I, I think. So. Yeah, maybe about 40 minutes. Yeah, and you stop along the way and you have some beautiful kind of picture spots um, uh, in Daful Sound. There is a special picture spot with a lot of care birds, which are those cheeky alpine parrots, which are really famous here. And then you hop onto a boat where you're going to be going through a bit of a cruise. So this is where kind of the difference lies between your multiple multi-day in Daful Sound and your uh, your one day in Daful Sound. If you just do your one day, you do a bit of a cruise. At some point, they even shut the engine of the boat and ask everybody to be quiet. And then, you know, you can hear just like the chaos from all the birds and everything around. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's fantastic. And then after you get back and it's the same trek back. If you stay overnight, you're going to stay on the boat. Um, there's no kind of shore landing or anything like that. You're going to stay on the boat, you have access to kayaks and you do a few things and then you get back a few days later. Um, so that's kind of a short description of Daffle Sound. Um, now, when it comes to actually compare, when you only have one month, as you mentioned, uh, GL, you only have uh, uh, four weeks in New Zealand. Um, it, no matter what, I will only do a one day. You know, I wouldn't stay overnight and I would try to see more things in New Zealand. So no matter mm -hmm. what, I would do one day, either in Milford Sound or in, uh, in Daffold Sound. Um, if you're on a budget, you're going to want to go to Milford Sound because Daffold Sound is, is significantly more expensive um, to go to rather than Milford Sound. If you're after a very unique experience and you want the bragging right, the Instagram shots that you've been to a place where Technically, only a, a few people have been there. Yes, there are two that goes uh, every single day. And yes, the buses are full. But if you consider that it's still kind of a very remote place yeah. in the world, right? So um, there's, there's very rarely places in the world where they only see 100 people a day. You know, and that's basically what I think it is. Maybe one or 200 people yeah. a day. It's really rare. In Milford Sound, there's much more people. The good thing with Milford Sound, though, is that it gives you much more flexibility. First up, you can go there yourself. So that means you can have your own schedule. If you are like Laura and I and love having plenty of time to explore places you go to, well, you leave at four o'clock in the morning, you arrive there, you're there at like seven in the morning and you get the time to do a hike, maybe a kayaking tour and even a cruise. And you make the most out of this absolutely wonderful place in the world. That honestly, for the amount of money spending to go to Milf to Dunford Sound rather than actually going myself in, in Milford Sound, being able to do three activities, I would love doing that. And I personally would prefer that. So yeah, um, if you are um, if you don't feel like driving um, uh, and, and you want to go to Milford Sound, there is also plenty of different bus options. And because there is plenty of bus options, you can find a lot of different prices. So, you know, prices are, are varied between, you know, you get some like luxury ones to some really cheap ones. Same for the cruises. You can get some cruise down to like sometimes $49, which is super cheap when you go down to Milford Sound, um, which is, you know, it's, it's, a really good, um, it's, it's a really good deal for a cruise in such a beautiful place. 
Um, so you get more options over there. Um, if you are willing to splurge and uh, spend some money, um, you can actually fly from uh, from Milford Sound and do a beautiful tour in the air over there. And actually from there, you will be able to actually see Duffel Sounds because uh, because they're really not too far from each other. They just, yeah. uh, you know, they just... There's a lot of mountains and it's hard yeah. to do, but with the plane, it's super easy, breezy, barely any convenience. So um, I, if I were to to choose right now, I would actually choose Milford Sound just because the flexibility, much more options and the price as well. Um, and, and also it will fit in your itinerary much easier rather than if something's can, canceled or this and that. So, you know, you yeah, I would choose Milford Sound. What about yeah. you? I would choose Doubtful Sound just oh. because... Okay. Yeah, That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, just to be different, but no, um, I I would choose it just because it is it is quieter. The cruises the cruises there are longer. The whole day is just yeah, it, the whole day is a really cool experience. And um, I would only do it if you are staying in Tiana or Mary. Um, I wouldn't do the doubtful sound if you're staying in Queenstown because that day would be like crazy long. Um, but yeah, yeah definitely if you. I would recommend if you're staying in TR now to do the Doubtful Sound Cruise. And it is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, you know, it's not often that people even get to come to New Zealand at multiple times throughout their life. So um, to actually go and do the sort of um, the, the longer um, fjord of Doubtful Sound, to have the sort of day trip where there's barely any other, you know, there's no other boats in sight. Um, it just feels a little bit more relaxed and stuff. Um, that's personally why I would go for Doubtful Sound. All right. So I hope that answered your question, GL. Um, tell us which one you're going to choose now that, uh, you know, you know that basically tell us which one of us is right. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. And if you do have questions of your own, put them in the comments below in the live chat if you're watching this live. And um, make sure to like and subscribe if you find us useful because that's super helpful to us. All right, let's go back to the live chat. Um, all right, what has been happening? Uh, okay, uh, Karin says, if I, this, if I want to come to New Zealand, where should I start? We, you're probably going to be landing in Auckland uh, because that's probably where all the plane lands, but we would advise you to leave Auckland as soon as you can. Um, Sagdas had a question, but we'll get back to it in just a few minutes. I'm just going to clean up a little bit the live chat. Um, Karen says she's in Salt Lake City in Utah, USA. Boom, used to have the Olympics over there back in uh, 1992, I think, or 1996. Whew. Uh, <laughs> Biplop <Nice Bip> <laughs> says, what about overseas student job to get uh, students to get job in Toranga? Easy breezy, very, uh, Toranga is a bustling city. It's not hard to find jobs. Yeah. Um, oh, an official bucket list family is in Southern California. Yeah. And, uh, and Buck and his family should uh, do a meetup right here. Gert, uh, Gert Mayer says, we're visiting in October. See you then. Uh, <laughs> see you then. <laughs> see you then. You're about to get, get really soon. I hope you're already packed. Um, Karin says she would love to uh, find out in gardening or farming. Plenty of that in New Zealand, that's yep, for sure. Absolutely. Gustavo Rutia uh, say, hi again. Do you know if tourists can rent in a raceway for a spin? I don't have an international driver license. Can I go as a co-pilot? Between last time you pronounced my name correctly. Cheers. How did I do now? Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can. Uh, you can go to Highlands. It's a raceway near Queenstown. We actually have a video about it. So type Highlands. I will type that for you in the uh, live chat. You can copy and paste. Yeah. And uh, yeah, find, uh, find out more about that. You're going to see us uh, going in a really, really fast car. We also did some go-karts racing as <laughs> yeah. well and everything. So yeah, watch this video of us doing that. And yeah, you definitely can. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Karen says, uh, we are awesome, so I like it. Um, no need to say anything else, yeah. Thank you so much, Karen. <laughs> GL say, thanks a lot for your answer. Love your video, keep it up. Learning toward Duffel, leaning, leaning toward, toward Duffel. No, God, yeah, damn. that's Lord right. Wins. She's always right. <laughs> um, and uh, which uh, Karen says, which city have job in farming and gardening? Every single city in New Zealand, it's a very agrarian. Uh, 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 country here in New Zealand and aside from Auckland and Wellington, uh, everywhere else you'll be able to find farming job. Very yeah, easy. obviously don't go for staying in the larger cities yeah. because obviously the farming is in more the rural communities um, around New Zealand, of which there are really many, many, many small towns with surrounded by yeah. farms. So yeah, just obviously, uh, obviously a bit of logic, don't be in the city centre of the largest city of New Zealand because yeah. there's no farms there, but everywhere else, yeah, super easy. All right, and good morning, Eshan. How are you doing? 
Uh, all right, so uh, Sagdas had a question right here. So Sagdas Osgun says on YouTube, hey, my working holiday visa has just been approved. What to do first? That's the best question, isn't it? All right, so your working holiday visa has just been approved by Immigration New Zealand. You've got the paperwork. And on the term and condition of your visa, it, say, it says that you have to come to New Zealand within the next either six or 12 months to um, activate your visa. So the first thing that you need to know is that when you're going to land in New Zealand, then um, the visa is going to be activated and you will have well, either 12, uh, 24 or six months, depending on what you have applied for and what you're allowed to enjoy New Zealand. So don't panic thinking that you have a working holiday visa for 12 months and that you have to go to New Zealand as soon as you can. Otherwise, you're going to lose those months that you're waiting for. It's not the case. So when you're going to enter New Zealand, then your visa will activate. However, you have to enter New Zealand within the term and condition that you've been given to. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is to uh, head to backpackerguide.nz. I know it's a bit of shameful promotion, mm -hmm. but we actually created a Bible for backpackers. Um, so that's definitely going to be a good source of information. Before you leave your home, you're going to want to start working on a New Zealand style CV you, because you're going to want to find a job, right? So don't be lazy and don't just translate your CV from home. This is not going to work. Start from scratch, get that blank Word document and follow our tips. To find our tips on Backpacker Garden NZ, you click on Work in New Zealand and then Job Searching Tips and you're going to have plenty of articles about doing your CV. Do your CV New Zealand style. It should take you a couple of hours only, but that will save you days and days and days of job search. So please do that. The next thing that you want to do is obviously to book your plane ticket. There is plenty of different airlines that brings you to New Zealand. I'll let you be the judge of which one's the best one for you. Usually, it's the cheapest. <laughs> um, get yourself, uh, so yeah, get yourself a plane ticket. Once you have your plane ticket, you want to pack your bag. Now, once, once packing your, uh, when packing your bag, you want to use our website as well. If you go on preparation or, or travel tips, sorry, then uh, on Backpack Together NZ, then you have preparation right here. And you can check our packing list. We tell you all about everything you need to pack, even how many pairs of socks you need to pack. And we also tell you about a lot of different gadgets. You're going to realize that there are something that you're not going to have. Like, for example, some, I don't know, I don't know if you have back home some really, uh, really good um, uh, waterproof hiking boots or some really good rain jacket or this and that. If you don't have that consider your options do you want to buy that in new zealand or do you want to buy that back home the pros and cons if you buy that back home you have to bring them into new zealand so that may be extra weight in your luggage extra hustle and you may realize that when arriving in new zealand it's not necessarily something that you need or want getting that in new zealand well you know sometimes depending on which country you're from it may be a little bit more expensive in new zealand but the pro is that they're going to be gears which are going to be geared to exactly what you need for the New Zealand, you know, your New Zealand trip. So that may be better. So consider your options, pack your bag. We got all the tips for you then. Now we're going to be landing in New Zealand. You're probably going to be landing in Auckland, New Zealand, which happens. It's okay. That's the biggest city, but that's not where you want to spend time in New Zealand, guaranteed. It is harder to find a job in Auckland because, yes, there are more jobs available in Auckland, but there are also much more people in Auckland as well. So your chances to land that job, knowing that you have much more competition, are much lower. So don't stay in Auckland. As soon as you land in New Zealand, head on to a tour and explore New Zealand for about two to three months. Check out a lot of different um, places, enjoy New Zealand, travel and have fun. When you get out of Auckland, let's say your first stop is going to be Pahia, all the way on top in Northland or Rotorua, a little bit uh, south of Auckland, they're a great place to stay in. Once you are in one of the cities, take the time to do your paperwork. You're going to need to open a bank account in New Zealand. Opening one in Auckland is a real pain. The banks are really busy. They usually push your appointment away and they don't want backpackers. However, in other cities, well, they have much more time for you. So then you do that. So you head to, let's say, Rotura, and you're going to be opening your bank, uh, your bank account there. If you want more information about opening your bank account, same thing. If you go on NZ, work in New Zealand, and then job tips, we tell you all about opening your bank account. So that's super easy. Just follow the tips. You're also going to want to apply for an IRD number. The IRD number is the Inland Revenue Department, Department whatever. I don't know what the name is, but it's, the it. it's your tax number in New Zealand. So that's a, that's a nine-digit number that allows you to work and pay your taxes in New Zealand. You have to do that if you want to find a job. If you're on a working holiday in New Zealand, you probably want... Um, and you probably want to actually have an IID number so you can work legally here. Um, to do that, it's a very simple uh, process. It's just one form. And same thing on NZ, work in New Zealand, 
work tips or job tips or job search tips, one of those, you'll find it. Um, and you will have an entire guide on how to apply for that. So you're going to have your IRD number and your bank account. Keep on traveling around New Zealand. The reason why you should travel around New Zealand is because it's going to get you to learn more about the country. You're going to learn the common culture with New Zealand, making it easier for you to find a job. You're going to find a place that you like more than, than any other, making it you know more enjoyable as an experience. And you're going to start making contact. Even when traveling in New Zealand, you will be meeting some locals. And that will help you find a job much easier. New Zealand is a very small country. If you do not have common culture, if you can't really talk about, oh, yeah, you know, I spent a weekend in Fakatani. You have no idea where that is. Uh, well, you, you know, you're going to be less employable than someone that says, oh, yeah, I've been there. It was really awesome. And uh, I actually took a trip to White Island. Have you been there? You have a discussion. To, you have something to talk with them about. Super important to find a job. So keep on traveling around New Zealand. And once you spot a place that you love, you've traveled enough around New Zealand, you love it. Now you're like, okay, I love, let's say, Rotorua. I really want to live and work there. Perfect. Base yourself in a hostel and start looking for a job. Be flexible. Look for a job all around the cities. And once you find a job that you like and, uh, and that you get hired, then only at that point, start looking for an accommodation. Do not look for an accommodation or long-term accommodation before you find a job. Stay in a hostel. Because if you end up finding a job super far away, then you have a, a lot of commuting. So you got your job, find yourself an accommodation close to your job. Once you've done that, you save a lot of money on commuting. You work, you learn, you learn. You know, you improve your English, you learn about the, the culture in New Zealand, you start saving a little bit of money. Once you're done working for about three, four months, boom, head out on the road again and keep on exploring New Zealand and work somewhere else. You're not here to get a career. You're, you know, you're here to explore New Zealand and have fun here. So don't strand yourself into only one place. You head to another place, maybe on the south end, and you do the same thing. You base yourself in the hostel, you find a, work, a job, and so on, and you repeat the process. Once you've done that, you're going to head back home and you want to make this experience super valuable on your CV. Otherwise, you're going to have so many of your employers say, well, you took a gap here. You went on a holiday for a year. Fantastic. But you can make that super valuable. And I, you know, I hired a lot of people in my time. So we actually did an article on Backpacker.nz to help you actually word and phrase your gap year experience onto your CV to make it a valuable experience, valuable for employers. Um, it works it works absolutely fantastically. I've got great feedback from, from some friend of mine in the US that have used exactly the technique that we gave them. And, um, and like that, you can make this experience both um, you know, super fun for you, um, not too expensive because you work and travel, um, enriching as a human uh, experience because you're gonna get to meet a lot of people and also super valuable for your work experience. So here's how I will start my working holiday visa. That we might learn. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, if you do have any follow-up questions like <laughs> that, just put them in the comment below. Yeah. And obviously, like and subscribe for you know the amount of word I've just said. Like you should give me one like for the amount yeah. of word I just said. I mean, you know how thirsty I am. <laughs> anyway, like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, guys. And we get back to the live chat. Who? What is Ooh. happening in the live chat? Um, Okay, shall I go down the live chat since yeah. you can have okay. some time yeah, to... I, I think I'll stop at Asia. Yeah. Then. yeah. So we got um yeah, so we've got uh which city does have jobs for farming and gardening? Uh we already talked about yeah. that. Um uh Biplop says thanks guys, and Heshan says morning guys, and then Karine says, uh yay, thank you. I would um love to have a list of farming places in New Zealand. Again, the whole country. <laughs> um the yeah, country. no, you uh, you don't really need to worry about specific places. They're absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad I caught you guys live. Well, we're glad you, to have you live as well. Um, and and getting down to the question, if you have to choose the best place for farming slash gardening, which one would you choose? The Canterbury Plains outside <laughs> yeah. of Christchurch. Here you go. I would say it depends what type of farming you want to do, but if the you... Canterbury Plains are of Christchurch. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to do dairy farming, go to Taranaki. It, the whole the whole the whole Canterbury Plains just an entire farm. Yeah. It's just far. There's a whole like about maybe about a quarter of the South Island is a huge farm. <laughs> so um, yeah, go there. Yep, so go yeah, Canterbury Plains near Christchurch is a good place to start. All right, Tero says, uh, Tero Taisin says, hi, uh, is there a place where it would be possible to see penguins without going on a tour? And or what would be the best place to go on a penguin tour? 
All right, so there are a few places where you will be able to see penguins without going on a tour. I mean, the Catlins, for example, yeah. um, or near Oamaru, but uh, it's less likely and you still have to stay far away from the penguins. The good thing with going on a tour is that they usually have access to either hidden huts or special equipment um, that will allow you to get much closer and to actually really enjoy the experience. If you go in a place where you don't have a tour, you're going to have to stay really far away from the penguins. I think they ask you to stay 30 meters away yeah. from the penguins. And uh, that's very far away from them. If you decide to go closer, well, no one really stops you to do that, but you will really disturb those penguins, which are actually endangered in New Zealand. So please don't do that. Um, but uh, yeah, there is, uh, there is actually quite a, a, a wide area of tools for penguins in New Zealand. And uh, Laura is going to cover them because I'm still recovering from the amount <laughs> yeah. of topic, talking I just done. Okay, so um, one of the best places to see penguins on a tour is on the Otago Peninsula. There's quite a few tour operators over there. Um, one of our favorite tour operators over there is Elmer Wildlife Tours. Yeah. They have access to a private conservation area. So you can actually go to sort of bird hides, which are basically those um, uh, sort of huts where you look at birds without just without them being able to see you. So you actually get some good close-up viewings of uh, yellow-eyed penguins, which are one of the rarest species of penguins yeah. in the world. And you also might get the opportunity to see little blue penguins as well. Um, I'm just going to say something. Yeah. If you type, type E... LM in the search bar of our channel and you'll find a full video about that too, yeah. which is really awesome. Yeah, and we do have some awesome fo footage of the penguins there oh, as well. Yellow eye penguins. <laughs> yeah, so Elm Wildlife Tours on the Otago Peninsula, which is near Dunedin. That is a really awesome tour. Um, also on the Otago Peninsula is um, the Royal Albatross Centre. And on an evening, they have um, a, a sort of gathering where they get people on... Um, on some platforms to watch little blue penguins coming back from their day out fishing and waddling back to their nests. So this is an evening tour at the Royal Albatross Center, definitely worth doing as well. Um, and also on the Otago Peninsula is a conservation area called Penguin Place, and they offer 90 minute tours around their conservation area. Again, giving you really good views of yellow eyed penguins, um, but also at a safe distance, that's also not going to disturb the penguins as well. But it's more of a guarantee that you actually will get to see the penguins, because that's the main thing to note really is that if yeah. you you want to avoid disappointment as well because you really want to see the penguins going on these tours is um the best way to see penguins also with minimal disturbance yeah. to the penguins there is also some little blue penguins in uh in in the same place near the Alberto center i just okay do you talk one? about omar yeah no not omar oh, yeah okay so there's another um Ooh. So in Oamaru, which is about an hour away from Dunedin, um, there is the Little Blue Penguin Colony is, is actually the sort of tourism operation that it's called Blue Penguin Colony or the Blue Penguin Colony, just something very generic like that. Um, but what they do is they have um, some sort of stands around a Blue Penguin Colony. So it's kind of like a like um, a football stadium, like a mini football stadium. Yeah, bring your big hand and say, go <laughs> penguins, go penguins. Yeah, and you sit around in this little sort of stadium thing and just watch all these blue penguins coming back from their day fishing, waddling back into their nests because um, the blue cat blue penguin colony is also conservation areas where they've actually built little nest boxes for the penguins and then you basically just sit there and watch all the penguins come back yeah. to their nests. And the good thing is that they use special light so the penguins don't see you and are not disturbed by the light so it's pretty awesome you just see them going about their everyday life which is yeah. quite, quite amazing. Um, yeah, it's a really cool place. Um, there is also a place in Akara called Pohatu Penguins, uh, yes. which are really awesome. Yeah, Pohatu Penguins, uh, like Robin says, it's in Akaroa, which is near Christchurch. It's about an hour to two hours drive away from Christchurch. And they actually are home to the largest colony of little blue penguins in Ooh. New Zealand. Um, there are obviously better times of the year to see actually the whole size of this colony because it's very seasonal as well. But Generally, throughout the year, they they actually do. You actually can see uh, little blue penguins um, re again returning from the ocean after a day's fishing back into their nests. Full bellies. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, because they also do conservation work there as well. They'll 
show you around during the daytime as well and um, the the nesting boxes and they might give you a little peek into a nesting box yeah. like they sometimes look after little blue penguin chicks that have been abandoned or maybe their um parents have died out at sea or something so they look look after the chicks and um, to get them fit enough to be rele released back into the wild and you often get the opportunity to see the little penguin chicks um which obviously yeah. are close up and that's really awesome as well and the money from you too actually goes to co like conservation effort that they're actually doing which is quite amazing um so uh we have videos about every single one of the tools we just mentioned yeah. right here so if you just type penguins in the search bar of our channel you'll be able to find that and if you want to learn more about how to see penguins actually even some tips about how to safely see penguins same thing head to backpack together and then and type penguins in the search bar and we have plenty of articles for you to help you out with that Anyway, I hope that was super useful to you, Tero. Uh, like and subscribe because, you know, like uh, we, we work hard on all those videos, so be cool. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so the video, oof, we only have nine minutes left with you guys. So it's time for you guys to um, check all your questions down in the comments, making sure that uh, we get the time to answer them before we leave. Otherwise, you know, leave them in the comments of any of our YouTube videos and we'll get to them on the following week. Um, such such grace say is new zealand good for solo travelers laura you've done a video about that about solo female travelers <laughs> so go for it yeah Anna. absolutely it is the perfect place for solo travelers loads of people come here by themselves robin came here by himself i came here by myself um and yeah it i Personally, I think that's the best way to come to New Zealand. Um, when you arrive, there's so many other solo travelers and that actually gets you, like it sort of forces you to talk to other people and then you have common ground with so many other people that are also solo traveling as well. So even though you are sort of arriving in New Zealand by yourself, it really doesn't mean that you have to experience New Zealand by yourself if you don't want to. Or you definitely can experience yeah. it by yourself if you want to. It, it really depends on yeah what what you what you want to do but new zealand is generally like really safe for solo travelers um never like yeah never had any problems i don't think i've heard of anyone that's had any problems so yeah solo travel good there you go karen says could you please make a video about farming in new zealand that would be <laughs> awesome so that i could have an idea karen do you like farming yeah um, we do so, have some videos yeah, on farming Actually, if you type farming, uh, farming on our YouTube channel, you will find some videos. Um, and especially you will find a video about dairy farming when I am showcasing some of the best dance moves you will ever see in your life. <laughs> so you've got to watch this one. Oh, God, I so. forgot about that. <laughs> so we have videos on dairy yeah. farming. We have videos on kiwi fruit farming. Yeah. Um, do we have any other farming videos? Uh, we've gone to we've sort of sh ship shearing. Ship things. shearing. Yeah. We have also been to beekeeping. Bee, yes, beekeeping farms where there's like petting farms where you basically feed the lambs and that sort of that, that was a um, fairly. Can you not remember? Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Who I had? I, just, I was just blacking. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we do have quite a few farming type videos and us actually helping working at yeah, working yeah. at a farm as well. So yeah, definitely search on our channel. Search dairy farming. Search um, kiwi fruit. Yeah. Beekeeping. All sorts. You'll find some stuff on there. Uh, Tero will say, thank you so much. Could you please still write the names of the places you recommended so I can make sure I heard it all right? Or do I find it from your articles? They're all on the article. So you go on Backpack Together and then and you type penguins and you will find all the articles and you will have the links on them right here. And so it links you straight to the right place and everything. So it's going to be much easier for you. So, um, so yeah, you can, you know, click and then go on their website, book your tour, do your thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so just type penguins so you know how to hear it right on, on the search bar of Backpack Together and then easy as um all right grace says thank you so much oh you're very welcome grace i mean laura is always happy to help um <laughs> did you uh, did you watch a video about solo female travel grace or, or no um you should definitely uh, watch it because you know she did a video all by herself and she didn't like doing that um mm -hmm. so yeah uh, karen says yeah she likes farming a stone skin hey that's been a while Man. I feel like we're getting a lot of people back that yeah. we haven't seen in a long it's like, time. It's like Flashback Central. Yeah. How are you doing skiing? That's been, that's been a long time. I need to travel again around New Zealand. I can see that. I like it. Um, Tiro says, okay. Thanks a lot. Everybody say thank you. I love it. You're Everybody's, welcome, guys. You're so welcome. Cool, nice. you know, look at that. <laughs> 
the traveling world is so so polite. It's awesome. So yeah, so I just want to address again the uh, the, the the concern from Grace um, saying that, uh, that that you know she's a bit scared about traveling alone. Honestly, I, I you know I know Laura just said that, but I cannot stress that enough. Almost everybody contact us and say they're scared about traveling alone. No one travels alone in New Zealand. Don't be scared. Just go in a plane and you're going to have a blast in New Zealand. This should not be a concern of yours yeah. whatsoever when planning your trip to New Zealand. And it's a real confidence booster as well. Like doing something like, like traveling across the world by yourself is like, it's really good for like just basically working on yourself and building, building character and all that good stuff. So... <laughs> 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 but that's, you know, I don't can't say that in a less cheesy way, but that's what it's about. It's like you should you know, have a thick policeman mustache and be like that bold character in myself. Yeah, it's like, this, is the, this is the sort of thing that school can't teach you. Just get out there, um, oh yeah, God, experience the world. <laughs> oh, the gusto you say that was amazing. I love it. <laughs> Uh, all right, Stone Skin asks, how's the weather in March in New Zealand? Uh, well, it's actually much better than it is right now, which is a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's quite nice. It's nice and warm. We actually have a full video about the weather in March in New Zealand on the channel. So if you just type March, you will find us blabbering about the weather in March for about 10 minutes, going through all the regions, the precipitation. We talk about the temperature, the UV levels, all those kind of things. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty, yeah, pretty handy. Check it out. Um, Kelsey. All right, Kelsey, uh, asking question at the last minute. You get four minutes, Kelsey. <laughs> you can close. Uh, my fiance and I are planning uh, to elope in March here. I need suggestion on where to have a ceremony. Uh, somewhere beautiful, but somewhat easy to access. What's elope? Uh, getting married in another country. Okay, good. I did not know that word. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> well, congratulations, Kelsey. Um, that, that's awesome. Uh, where should you get married in New Zealand? If your place is easy to access, but really beautiful, you could actually plan most of your ceremony uh, from Auckland and get it to happen in places like Murray, which is on the, on the on the coastline, and you have gannets birds right here. Gannets are actually um, probably the most romantic birds because they do live together. So you, <laughs> you can see, see them, them sort of like nesting doing together. their mating rituals. Exactly. <laughs> so they're one of the most romantic birds. So I think like, you know, that would be an amazing yeah. place to actually do that near the Gannett colony in Murray Beach in Auckland. Um, I think that would be, yeah. you know, that you will have the wide life, you will have the rugged, beautiful coastline New Zealand and you have the ease access from Auckland because it's only about I think it's about an hour, uh, yeah. about, about an hour from Auckland. But that would also mean that you can organize everything with all the facilities from New Zealand's larger city. So that could be a cool one. Uh, otherwise, you can do uh, fun things from the South Island. Um, you can organize a few things from Christchurch. They could happen around Mount Cook, which is absolutely amazing. You can do some scenic flights around Mount Cook, some of the cheapest ones in the country. So I'll be eloping and straight away hopping in the plane and seeing New Zealand's tallest mountain or the Southern Alps. That'd be absolutely stunning. But actually, we do have an article on Backpacker Guide about some of the most romantic things to do in New Zealand, right? Yes. Um, just recently, I have been working on loads of articles on uh, various locations around New Zealand and basically the top 10 romantic things to do here, 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 here. So if you go on backpackerguide.nz and you type in romantic, romantic. or you could type in honeymoon because we've got honeymoon guides as well. Yeah. If you want some stuff to do, you know, after, of course, you've got married, then... Um, Loads of information about that now on the website. So go so check it's that out. Backpackerguide.nz, and then you type romantic on there. But we also have, uh, I remember the Valentine Day article that we wrote. That was like, uh, <laughs> that was uh, uh, 10 uh, romantic things to yes. do in New Zealand. So we actually yeah. have an article that could go through all of that. But um, I think my idea of the Gannett colony right here is pretty spot on. So. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, I've definitely seen a lot of people getting married from Queenstown. And yeah. um, if yeah, you yeah. want some alpine sort of landscapes, for um, you know, for the photos and things, Queenstown has a huge sort of like business in the whole like marriage thing. So um, yeah, so you can get married on the ski fields, you can get married by the lake. There's um, photo shoots in many different places that you can do. So Queenstown would definitely be a really easy place to organise, but or pro probably not the cheapest. <laughs> uh, no, guaranteed not the cheapest. <laughs> yeah. So it depends what your budget is. But yeah. you know, when you get married anyway, you have to spend money, right? Yeah. So the good thing with uh, eloping, now, in other words, yeah. the good thing about eloping is that you don't have to feed your entire family. So you, all the money you say you save on all those steaks and and, and salmon you know, platters for your family <laughs> and everything, boom, put all that into doing something epic for just you and your husband to be. 
that's the selfish wedding everybody deserves. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, that, that's cool. You yeah. are you are gonna have much more budgets. That, yeah. That's a good thing. Um, but yeah, um, Kelsey. Uh, if you want to do a bit of research on backpacker.nz and come back next week if you have any follow-up questions or any extra location that you want to know of and we'll be happy to answer uh, your questions. If you come about an hour before that time right now back home because it's the time when we're about to conclude the video. Um, uh, Karen says, uh, it's, true, it's true it builds characters. Uh, she came to the USA all by herself. Stoskin says, and he got his international master degree in computer science. Congratulations! Ooh. He got all sorted with immigration and a nice. bunch of emojis. About yeah. Because <laughs> he said, cool, thanks. I'll check it out. Um, don't be sorry to be late. It's just, uh, <laughs> I'm just telling you why we don't have more information for you. It's just it. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't panic. We're here for you. Even if you can't even make it, just put it, put your questions in any comment on our videos. And then we, you know, we print them and then we go over them when the live chat's a little bit slow. So it's all good. Um, Fiona Lee says, hi, girl. Do you have any sport or do you play any sport or dance? Laura, do you do any sport or dance? <laughs> she made me do Zumba recently and that did not go well. I do not like sweating my ass like that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the only sport I really do is snowboarding and, and hiking. Can they be classed as a sport? Probably not. But um, I think they are. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's exercising in some yeah. way. So, yeah, yeah. so I go out and exercise, but I don't play any competitive sport. Yeah. Um, uh, I just dress like I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do a lot. Obviously, so we don't do a sport as like, you know, we don't go every Wednesday playing football or whatever. But we, obviously, because we do Backpack Gather NZ and we do all those activities and everything, we're always in and about. I mean, if you watch this channel and you watch some of our videos, we do activities every day. I mean, we did, we, we did something called New Zealand's Biggest Gap here, which was 365 days. We challenged ourselves to do 365 activities in New Zealand. Um, that kept us quite active, um, to say the least. That was absolutely yeah. insane. Why would we do that ever? But um, yeah, so that, that's the kind of activities that we do. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, Laura tried Zumba recently. And yeah, she forced I, me to try I like to, to dance, but um, unfortunately, uh, in the small town that we are staying in in New Zealand, there's not much opportunity for um, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so we do our own dancing uh, Zumba classes on the TV. <laughs> yeah, I uh, didn't like that. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video, for joining us for another one of those live chat sessions. We are here every single week on Sunday, 8 a.m. New Zealand time. If you're not sure what time it is, it is for you, in the description of this video, there's already a link for you. Just click on it and you'll be able to find out what time it is for you. But around time those times uh, in your side of the world. So if you are in the USA, 4 p.m. EST, 12 p.m. PST, UK, 9 p.m. France, 22 heures, and India, uh, 1.30 a.m. And that is on Sunday and all the other ones on Saturday for you guys. Um, remember to uh, like, subscribe, do all those kind of things for all our videos. And again, thank you so much for helping us reach 11,000 subscribers. Make it rain. <laughs> I, just, I just read the word cash. Oh, what is, is it safe to come? It's safe to come with a big amount of cash? Uh, yeah, I don't think there is much of a... I think you have to declare it if you come with more than 10,000 New Zealand dollars. But even if you declare it, it's totally fine. So, yeah, I'd say it's Just safe. Don't, don't tell anyone. Yeah. All right. That was the last question from Stoskin. See you next week, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See ya. See you next week.